What is up, Notre Dame fans? I'm Mike Singer. He's Mike Goolsby, former Fighting Irish captain and linebacker. And uh, it, it is time for the Mike Goolsby Show. It is Sunday night. We are live on YouTube. We appreciate everyone who is with us live um, to uh, to talk Notre Dame football recruiting um, in a special edition of the Mike Goolsby Show. Um, for those watching back via podcast, appreciate you guys as well. This is... Um, you know, we're, we're going to be popping on YouTube, um, like or video uh, onto this YouTube show and Mike's going to talk about it. So this is, you know, if you're listening via podcast right now, you might want to pause it if you can and, and try to watch this on YouTube. Um, so you can see what Mike is talking about. Um, this is going to be a little bit more of Goolsby breaking down the recruits and not so much of a Q and a. Uh, please hit the thumbs up, drop a super chat. We will get to super chats, but otherwise we won't be taking um, any uh, any comments from our live YouTube chat. But again, hit the thumbs up um, and uh, you know, let us know what, what you're thinking about some of these recruits in the comments. For this show, we're going to be talking about Notre Dame's 10 offensive recruits uh, that they signed so far in the 2021 class, or 2022 class, excuse me. And of course, guys, um, there's always the possibility of grad transfers, um, Notre Dame potentially signing additional players in the, uh, in the February signing period. Uh, but for now, we're just going to be talking about the 10 guys who Notre Dame signed. Like I said, guys, hit that thumbs up, um, like, and subscribe, uh, our YouTube channel here at blueandgold.com. All right, we're going to go first to Notre Dame quarterback signee, Steve Angeli. Uh, from Oradell Bergen Catholic. Um, so the, we'll, we'll watch a couple of games from his senior year highlights. So, Mike, what do you, what do you see on him uh, when you're watching his tape? Um, you know, I played with a kid, Matt Lavecchio, some Irish fans may recall, um, who was in my recruiting class. So I'm super familiar with Bergen's program, um, a natural fit for a, a program like an ND. Um, and Jelly's interesting – I, I would, I'm going to call him an athlete, right? He's an athlete at the position. Some people say I've heard, you know, say he's he's athletic for the quarterback position or he's sneaky athletic. I'll call him an athlete. Um, so there's that. And then the other thing that kind of jumps out to me, really good size. Notre Dame in, in the last several years, say for a few different, like the uh, Deshaun Kaiser, if you will. I mean, that's going back, but. Um, Phil Jerkovic obviously didn't work out. We don't really, generally speaking, have like your 6'4 type quarterback. So this kid's big enough, plenty big, 6'2 or so. Um, I've heard you say multiple times, Mike, you know, you're the, uh, this is your, you know, the, your kind of, uh, your your fan club for this year is you're an Angeli guy. Last year it was Mr. Alt. So you're at least one for one with that. But you said that Steve's dad's like a, six six you know really big guy so there might be some room to grow there but so i'm going to call him an athlete he has a little bit of uh, understated swagger to me makes some things happen doesn't get a chance to throw a lot or maybe as much as you know your five star elite 11 types maybe west coast types uh high school quarterbacks but my favorite thing about angeli is just a really natural thrower yeah um real natural like Nothing's, it just, it's, when you watch this kid throw a ball, Mike, I'd love to know like what his hand size is. I mean, we'll learn that, you know, if he ever makes it to the combine pro day type thing, but a kid that can spin a ball like that and just, it's just a real nice, easy release. And it looks like it's natural. It doesn't look like he's, uh, you know, to bend, bend any, any of these co- you know, quarterback coaches or where it's like, it's overdone. But um, so here's that athleticism right here. And that's all you need is just a little bit of escapability. I think what we have on the roster now, and you know, Cone's more of a statue, and and Tyler's uh, exceptionally athletic. But I would say that Angeli's um, kind of a nice little middle ground there. Sure, um, maybe probably runs like in the four seven ish, four eight range, which is plenty fast, folks, uh, for the position. But yeah, he just really spins the ball and just seems like a confident, confident kid. Looks the part. So. Good get. A couple quick things. This sure. film, this is senior film. He hasn't put together like a highlight. So, you know, like a like a eight minute, ten minute highlight film of senior year yet. So this is just individual games. So this is, you know, if you're like, where are all the touchdowns? You know, like, so we're, we're yeah. not seeing 
Um, yeah, it is. Time. Yeah, it's, it, I just I remarked earlier tonight, kind of prepping for this uh, podcast. It seems like once kids recruitment, you know this, Mike. I mean, once once they've gotten their star ranking and they've got their top five. I don't think they do as much legwork in terms of putting together the highlight yeah. tapes and such. So it's almost it's almost difficult, ironically, to find senior year on these kids. You got to you know seek them out on Twitter. But this right. is speed to the edge here. Um, finishes the play. Get up, Steve. So yeah, I like them. It's uh you know maybe an interesting comp would be like um maybe a little bit bigger Drew Pine. Okay, kind yep. of that same swagger confidence nice arm athletic ability just a little bit you know substantially bigger yeah the thing what i say about him is like the mental makeup that's huge for that position like kids been battle tested played a lot of football um i mean he, he he's just a really solid player um he's got the good like i don't think he's got elite arm strength but he's got above average arm strength he's got really good athleticism for someone who's you know a, a I mean, he, he's already bigger than Buckner. Buckner's like 6'1", 200 pounds, and Jelly's 6'2", mm-hmm. 210. Um, I love his mechanics. I mean, he's a great Notre Dame fit. I mean, there's, yeah. um, you know, I don't it's think... A, it's, a safe, it's a safe sign. It's a safe sign, and I but was still But was still, like, generally high upside, too. You know, yeah. like, you know, he, he, he threw, like, 120 passes this season. I mean, they just don't throw the ball a ton in, in that sure. power Catholic ball in, in New Jersey. I still think there's room and I do, you could forecast it in Notre Dame's future with Freeman kind of being our lead recruiter, sort of hired gun out there. You could forecast that we're going to get one of these, you know, top five pick future, top five pick elite 11, top five, five-star quarterbacks, hopefully without the ego. And it's interesting, whereas you look at our, our roster, the way it's constructed in that quarterback room, it's a pretty easy sell for a recruiter to say, like, we don't have any other five-star type quarterbacks on the roster. So it's it's uh, depending on how Tyler does into the future, but that would sort of be the narrative is just to say, hey, you know, you'd be the first five-star guy we've had here in, in a number of years. So Steve's a really good player. He's not uh, – it's going to hurt your feelings, Mike, but – yeah, he's not like that five star just no, he's not. stud. He's not that stud. And yes, the upside's obviously there. There's no glaring concerns, absolutely. There just doesn't have the that kind of impact that we all want to see. Yeah. Right. I mean, look, I really like this this uh Mikey, I don't know if you know about Brady Allen. He's a, a Purdue quarterback signee, like put up huge numbers playing in southwestern indiana and you know lit it up i think his team won a state title and it's like i think if you put an angeli in that kind of system at the high school level i think all the pundits out there would love him but you know his offense was very pro style um angeli checked a lot at the lines checking out of passes into runs i mean like Mm -hmm. he's just like you know i i think he's in a high upside game manager and what i've been told is that he is just like his knowledge of the game of football I believe is, that. is really high. And, um, you know, so I, I think he's going to be a really solid addition. Quick shout out, Bolton Landed Brewing. Appreciate the, the free beer as always. Um, Mike, we did skip something we wanted to open with. So we'll, we'll go back to that because I forgot. Just kind of your general impressions yeah. um, of this offensive group. Um, you know, you got Angeli. One running back to Jerry and Price, one receiver, only one receiver in this class. When it seemed like for a while there, four, it was going to be three to four, and then we get one. Tobias Merriweather, he's a darn good one. Um, you know, two tight ends, Holden Stays, Eli Raird, and both freaks, in my opinion. And then five offensive linemen Joey Tanona, Billy Shrouth, Ty Chan, Emil Wagner, um, and Ashton Craig. So just your, your, your general thoughts on the offensive group. Yeah, I'll get to that. Just wanted to put a bow on Angeli. Sure. Not a knock at all. But again, what we want, like you said, you're comparing him to this kid that's going to Purdue, right? That put up all the numbers, the gaudy stats. I feel like Notre Dame fans, at least, you know, I as, as a fan, we kind of run that pro style offense, a nice mix of run and pass. We, I think we all want a quarterback where if he had to go win it on his own, he could, right? So that's, that's all I'm trying to say. Yeah. Uh, so as to not be kind of 
misconstrue things. But in terms of the class in general, both offense and defense, only going to get to offense tonight. It's a really good class. Really, really good class. We held down the number one ranking for, you know, a couple months or something, Mike, um, which gives us some some notoriety kind of in the recruiting world that we, you know, we, we, we touched it and we kind of came back down to earth. But it's a great class. And when you look at Coach Freeman as a coach, and I just look at, like, defensively speaking, look what we've done on a defense this year where you haven't even really had a full off season with Coach Freeman's scheme. You've got like backups playing at linebacker. You know, J.D. Bertrand has had a, a hell of a year, all things considered. He's like a third stringer, you know, prior to, to to fall camp. So now you're starting to get some of these athlete types in here. And, you know, Jalen Sneed, to me, is kind of the crown jewel on the defensive side of the ball. And then the other thing that's notable about this class when you compare it to the current state of the team in this past season Lots of offensive linemen in this year's class, and um, the first three, four, five, six games of the year, that was the biggest question mark, ironically, at a program like Notre Dame that's kind of turned itself into O-line U. So we don't want that to happen again. You had some key injuries. You had some guys that maybe didn't develop. So you kind of play the numbers game here. Nothing nothing against any of these offensive line recruits, but um, I think they're all going to pan out. But uh, that was just an interesting – juxtaposition in terms of our biggest struggle on offense this year was the offensive line play. And then we, we back it up with the number of kids that we're going to sign this year or have signed this year. So really good class. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and, that, oh, they... real quick too, real quick too, real, you know, so you touched on the one wide receiver. Right. Um, first of all, I really, really like Merriweather. And as I'm watching this Packers game, like he, he kind of reminds me of that MBS Marcus Valdez Scanling in terms of measurables kind of, slim but uh great movement like real pliable bouncy i really like him and we've got a good offensive coordinator and coach reese and we've got a bevy of tight ends at our disposal there's a lot you can do with limited numbers at the tight at the at the wide receiver position you can do a lot out of 12 personnel i mean you could i mean you just give me an imaginary whiteboard but like you can move tyree out and he can move into a slot right and you can have digs as your downhill runner um, I think Eli Raritan's a kid that you can split out wide. We've seen Mayer used as, as a wide receiver at times. So it's kind of a glaring, like, gosh, we only got the one. Um, but the less kids that are in the room, the quicker they develop. And that's also an interesting thing where it kind of been a struggle for Notre Dame's program over the last few years. Is like, Jesus, it takes four years for a receiver to get on the field. That won't be the case going forward. Yeah, wasn't the case this year. You had Colzine stop yeah. play and – yeah, absolutely. Um, and I like I like Merriweather better than Colsey. I mean, comparing the two, it's just my preference. Um, I, he's a really good get, but we'll get into it. Yeah. All right, make sure you guys hit the thumbs up if you're watching live with us. Um, drop a super chat if you want Mike Goolsby to answer a- a- anything um, and everything. I say it's got to be more than like – it's got to be at least a five spot, though. We're not – you know, because we are uh, – we, we're, we're really going to dive into uh, these recruits film. Okay. Um, next up, Jadarian Price, four-star running back out of Texas. Um, this is film that um, we shot earlier this year. So, Mike, why don't you tell us about Jadarian Price? First of all, Texas running back, I like that in terms of level of competition. So, you check that box. Watching his film, the first handful of plays were just home runs. Kind of looked like uh, Will Shipley's film, uh, you know, the Clemson kid who we were in love with, where it's just all home runs. And then you, and then it wasn't until about halfway through the film where you started to see some what I would call like a dirty run, where it's not clean and he's able to show some balance. Here you're seeing some physicality. So big upside with him. I think he does have some filling out to do. He's a long armed kid, long levered kid. And you know how much I like length in terms of football players now. It's just what we're all sort of seeking out. But uh, hard runner. I think he'll get faster as he continues to develop. Um, and fill out. That's a, I'd say the case with Merriweather as well. Um, just power, sometimes a little bit more power, a little bit more muscle, tightening up your body. You'll get some speed out of that. But uh, really good player, catches the ball really well. You don't see a ton of that on his highlight t- tape. I know he caught a bunch of balls as a junior. So just a really well-rounded back. Um, and 
yeah, it's it's when you look at him, you kind of like it almost looks like a, a shorter version of like a Darren McFadden. I was trying to come up with a comp, right? Because sure. he's just long. It almost looked like a like a, a small forward playing playing the tailback position, but he's physical and he's got that balance where he's that, there's a there's a play on this highlight tape I saw where they're in running wildcat and he ends up fumbling the ball and he gets out of like four or five snaps. Um, but yeah, bright future for him. Uh, don't be disappointed if he, it takes a year for him to to see meaningful playing time. Obviously, with with the running back room as it is right now. But I like him, kind of a, a one cut and go type guy, and you can use him in a pass game. I mean, does he? He seems to fit in really well with the guys they have on their their current roster. I mean, they're all. Pre, I mean, man, you lose Kyron, that's going to suck. But you know, they're all you know catch the ball, block. I mean, mm-hmm. Lance Taylor's known for his work with Christian McCaffrey. Obviously, you know, one of the best all-purpose backs we've ever seen, and. Kind of, he kind of likes those guys in that mold. Logan Diggs, Chris Tyree, Jadarian Price. We'll see on Andre Guest is a little bit more of a power guy. But, I mean, is that is that fair just to say that? I mean, Price yeah, is just another yes. all-purpose guy. And, uh, yeah, and I mean, running backs anymore, Mike, they have to be all, all-purpose, right? You have, to, you have to be able to catch the ball. So it, it, I think it's going to be – there's a lot of toys for Coach Reese to play with here in that – just look at Estime. So you, we all look at his body type and we look at the height weight measurables and you expect him to be a hammer, but he flashed quite a bit of speed, right? Um, Logan Diggs is kind of a, I would say that, uh, yeah, Logan Diggs is kind of a, a balanced of, of speed and power. Then Tyree's just, you would presume straight speed, but he's shown power and he's shown some balance and some physicality. So you've got a lot of different backs that have like an inherent sort of skill set but they're multiple at the same time. So when you plug player X or player Y into the game at any given time, it's not like necessarily a dead giveaway. Does that make sense? Sure. Like if they put Estime in on a on a third and three, it's not necessarily going to be a, a lead blast, right? He could, he's got speed to get outside too. Um, and the same thing with Tyree. You might expect Tyree is, okay, we're going to run off, off tackle. It's like, well, he can cut it up inside now. Or we can motion him out. So there's a lot of a lot of toys to play with. He's, I mean, the closest thing to me is he's closer to Diggs than Estime and or Tyree at this sure. point. Yeah, yeah, I think that's fair. Okay. Notre Dame signed. It's uh, one receiver um, from the state of Washington. Not exactly fertile recruiting grounds, but kind of shows Notre Dame's power in uh, being a national recruiting race. So uh, film we'll watch here for YouTube um, and make sure those who are with us live hit the thumbs up. This is a couple of single game film. Um, so first play here is uh, Merriweather at corner. You'll see him uh, in the secondary. You'll see him, you know, punt returns, slot outside. He's a great um, returner. He, yeah. So yeah. L- l- tell me what you think about Tobias Merriweather, Mike. Again, he's – we've talked about this before, ad nauseum. We need special players on the edges. I think Lorenzo Styles got the ability to be a special player, polishing up his uh, – because when you look at the receiver position, everybody wants like height and speed, right? So Lorenzo Styles has speed, Braden Lindsey has speed, but there has to be some polish to that, some wiggle to that, ability to jump, body control. This is a really good receiver, great measurables. I don't care that he's a little bit light. I don't care at all. I'd rather have the pliability and the athleticism than just size. Um, big fan of this kid. Just kind of an explosive kid. You see it in the return game. He's a little cocky, which I love at the position. Notre Dame needs um, just a little sprinkle of that, at, you know, throughout throughout the locker room. So he should play early, to me. He really should. Yeah. Um, and yeah, West Coast kid. They. Yeah, I, I just I like him. Goes up and gets the ball. Uh, and I it's, I I don't have the word. I keep trying to use like pliability or wiggle. But like, you know, when you watch, like when you go watch an NFL game, I mean, they're just, it's just guys being athletes. And this is what you, what you have here, as opposed to just raw speed or he's just big, like Colsey's a big receiver. Styles has just crazy raw speed. This kid's got, can get in and out of the breaks. And uh, I think he's going to be a fun player. If that makes, if that makes sense. I think he's the type of guy that can like make plays. Kevin Austin's like, it's just fun to kind of compare all these kids. Like, um, Who's the kid that went to play for the Ravens? Uh, 
Miles Boykin. So he's Kevin Austin's kind of like a Miles Boykin, almost um, like a Michael Floyd, kind of rigid in his movements, you know, and robotic is it carries too negative of a connotation. But this kid's much, much bouncier to me. Um, it, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm really optimistic. So I know we only got the one, but like this to me is modern day football. Um, and this is like sort of an NS, NFL type skill set in terms of like the way they, the, the body moves. Um, I'm a big fan of Tobias Mayweather. Mayweather. Yeah. So he's listed at 6'4", 188. And yeah, he, he's thin, but it's like, that's the one thing I, yeah, like you said, I wouldn't really be concerned about that. I mean, he put on 10 pounds in a year, you know, like that, that's, you know, like I, the, the frame, I wouldn't be concerned about at all. He's right? just loose. Like if you look at Kevin Austin run routes and he's got, you know, the height, weight, speed and all that, but like he, that kid's, Meriwether is a much looser athlete. Um, twitchy. He's twitchy. He's twitchy. Yeah. Kind of twitchy, kind of looser. So he'll, he'll be a fun player. Uh, I'm very excited about him. He's probably my second favorite signee on the offensive side of the ball in the class. All right, let's move into talking about the tight ends. Uh, who do we got here first? Holden Stays from my neck of the woods um, in Atlanta. Um, yeah, curious what you uh, think about him. Let me get his, um, his, uh, his film popped up here. Just give me a second, guys. All right. As you're getting into it, Mike, I can just kind of... Yeah, no, yeah, I got it. Um, right. I, Holden stays tight end and sunny. I think both Holden and Eli Raritan will both play early or both can play early. Um, Holden seems like very well in terms of his physical development. Like he's kind of there, looks definitely looks the part. Physical player, um, really strong hands. Um, definitely to me... Uh, more of an intermediate type route, not necessarily a stretch the field type guy at, at the college level. We see <laughs> like their whole offense was out in trips. So he's either in the slot in the trips formation, or he's a single wide receiver. It's all he kind of does. Um, you do get a chance to see him block a little bit in line and he's a physical guy, almost blocks like a fullback. But he, to me, he's more of your intermediate um, pass catcher, in, in a Notre Dame scheme. Um, one thing I, for as, as developed as he is, as like thickly built as he is, and, you know, powerful of an athlete as he is, I, I wanted to see him break a few more tackles in this, in this film. So that that's going to be an interesting element to kind of watch that unfold and see if he can add that to his game. But, uh, yeah, it looks like he's got just strong hands, super physical kid. Not necessarily a burner, kind of a reliable type tight end. Yeah. Didn't necessarily wow me with speed or athleticism, but just a general all around really, really good player. Yeah. And I think, you know, the polish is there. I think he'll play early. I do. Okay. Let's let's go to Eli Raritan now. And then what yeah. we'll do, Mike, is we'll kind of talk about comparing and contrasting, you know, like which one you think, you know, is more of the block or which you think um, is more of the, you know, the, the split them out kind of guy. Um, yeah. But Eli Raritan, uh, got his tape on here for YouTube. I mean, he exploded as a senior. I mean, it, he had a huge year, went from a three star to a, you know, top 200 player on all these sites. I mean, what are your thoughts about Eli Raritan, Mike? So, He's my favorite signee on the offensive side of the ball. I'm a little biased. You know, his, his father, Scott, was a teammate of mine. We actually lived two doors down from me in St. Ed's Hall for a couple of years. Uh, and I met Eli in person. And, you know, I'm 6'4", Mike. I thought I was 6'3". We measured me the other day. My girlfriend was like, are you 6'3 or 6'4"? I was like, I don't know. Let's measure. So I'm 6'4". I met Eli and I was looking up. Like he's yeah. tall enough where if he's six six, he's a tall six six. You follow me? Whereas like go I've ahead. I've met him. I'm six three. Uh all right. He's six, a big three. dude. He makes me feel small. Like, like he, yeah, he, he he shocks everyone when you see him in person. That that's what I hear from everyone. But continue. And this is the this is the thing. And when I met him, you know, he like and I'm saying this half kidding, but he reminded me of like Ivan Drago from the Rocky films. Like that's sort of how 
like the impression that I get, but like the comp to me, he's more like a Kyle Rudolph um, just in terms of the frame and the overall size, like you can't coach size and not the biggest guy in the world, you know, in terms of musculature and being, and again, these kids are, they're still in high school, but yeah, he'll be a 200, 250 pound. I think this could be like the next great one at Notre Dame. And he's a special kid in that, like, A, he's a hell of a basketball player, just speaks to the athlete, like the overall athleticism. And then you see him breaking tackles and, like, he's hungry, dude. Like, um, I, don't know how to, I don't know how to explain that, but, like, the competitive, like, will, the, like, the fire is in this kid. And you can kind of see it on the film through the breaking of the tackles, driving people out of the end zone. Doesn't seem to be a lot of, like, you know, ego in terms of being a, a – you know, big shot recruit, like the chip on the shoulders is there. Um, and when you watch the kid play hoops, like he's, he's fired up, man, he's a competitor. So take all the physical gifts and then you couple that with, with somebody like a mental makeup like that, it could be a, a really special thing to, to watch this unfold. But yeah, he, he's, he's pretty awesome, dude. Pretty good player. I don't know what he runs, um, but you don't see this every day, right? Little end arounds. And see, see where I'm talking about, Mike, where he yeah. just kind of doesn't go down. I love that stuff. So, so I think I think he'll become a a fan favorite here in, in short order. Yeah, I go to a lot of high school games, and there will be you know you know let's say a school's got one recruit, like one power five player, and it's a receiver, a tight end, and they just don't get them the ball. And I'm like, it just doesn't make sense. Get your best player to freaking football. That's what this Valley team does with Raritan. I mean, all these jet sweeps and bubble screens that they threw to him this year. I mean, uh, uh, kudos to that staff for getting the, their best player the football. As far as comparing the two, I mean, look, I, I think St- Stays even looks like Tremble. So I think the comp for him is Tommy Tremble, uh, both Atlanta guys, I should mention. And then Raridan, you mentioned Rudolph, but I mean, the ceiling for this kid is just so incredibly high. I mean... W- Tell me about using them in the Notre Dame offense. Where would you like to see them, you know, in terms of who's in line, who's split out? You know, do you think either of them could, you know, be a boundary receiver even at times? I think there's – this is like kind of the – might be the theme of the offense going forward is the multiplicity, like just throwing dudes around. I love it. So, yeah, but the multiplicity of almost everybody on the roster, save for a couple different wide – like wide receivers, right? Styles is going to do what he does. But – you know, you can use Tyree in a slot. You could move. So, like, and this is, I want to say this, too, and I don't mean to forgive me if this is obvious and people know this, but, like, when you call a defense, it's based off of the offensive personnel. Right. So, if we come into the game with 12 personnel, they're going to put, more than likely, they're going to come out with a base defense or nickel at best. And you could now, be all wide, sudden, though, in that, right? Co- correct. Yeah, so all of a sudden, you've got, you know, our will, you got J.D. Bertrand trying to run with Chris Tyree, right? Because he, he motioned out in the slot. And then you've got a small, you've got a six foot, 192 pound strong safety trying to cover a six, six Raritan as your down tight end. And then, oh, we've got Michael Mayer split out. So it's, it's really fun, the interchangeability of all these kids. But yeah, I think Stays is probably going to be your move guy. Almost like that H back role that we saw from Tremble, you know, and, and Coach Reese kind of has that in his bag already, or is, is you know his arsenal. And uh, yeah, Raritan, you could probably uh, you can use him in line because he's a, a willing blocker. And that's another thing too. Like people get caught up in heights and weights and all this. I was having a conversation with a buddy, more of an argument really, <laughs> talking about tight ends, and it's like, well, George Kittle's. You know, 260, it's like, no, he's not. George Kittle's probably 235. At this point in the season, George Kittle's probably 235, 240, and he wants to kick ass, right? So don't get concerned that if a kid's only 240, if a kid's only 235 or 245, whatever the number is, that he can't be a an inline blocker. We don't need a 260-pound guy because half the shit's effort, dude. Sure. And I think you'll get that here. Yeah. So, um, and, you know, it's another thing, too, to just compare – Raritan, and we don't want to spend too much time here, Mike, but like Michael Mayer, so you, you, his progression as a as a stud, the next stud at, at tight end here at, at ND, he was he was just a pass catcher. And then like this, even this year coming into the season, he was used so much as a pass catcher. I think he was dog tired and gassed and he really didn't have the juice to be a, a, a blocker. Uh, 
a dominant blocker, but his blocking's progressed. Um, but yeah, super stoked about Eli Raritan, the potential, good family, good kid. I think he takes the stuff seriously. Um, and one other thing about tight ends, Texton Fasano, who you know I think Anthony came Fasano, out, and, former Dolphin. Yeah, Fas- so Fasano came out in 05, 06, second round draft pick by the Cowboys before he wound up with the Dolphins. And I'm like, and I texted him and I was like, and this gets back to, this is just funny. I was like, has anybody ever given you credit for, because he is the first tight end that, you know, we've had that run, right, since 05. Every tight end that's been drafted, right. except every, every, every tight end that started at Notre Dame has been drafted. He was the first one. I was like, did anybody ever, you know, recognize you for that? And he was like, man, I still buy my tickets on StubHub. So, which kind of goes back to the whole Brian Kelly, you know, former player type relationship thing. So, kudos to uh, giving Fasano a shout out there. Yeah. Giving some some love. Um, so, anyways, I, yeah. I, I grew up a huge Dolphins fan, and I will never forget his touchdown reception against the Patriots when the uh, when the Dolphins broke out the Wildcat. So, I think that was 2007. So, um Yeah, I mean, so Holden Stays would be like a Fasano. Fasano was a jack of all trades. Blocked like a fullback. Could get could get loose on a deep ball, but just a really, really, really good football player and did a lot of things really and well. Raritan is your mayor. Just throw him the freaking football. Like he's your. Yeah, I mean, well, a- mayor's always interesting to me because I look at mayor's body, and this is like not at all a, a knock, but he doesn't have like the length that Eli does. So I'm like, and I, you know, when it comes to dr- draft time, like so Kyle Pitts, who was a top ten pick right of the Falcons. He had like a six eleven wingspan or something like that. Whereas Mayor is not going to have those type of measurables, but Mayor's just got a knack for it, right? He's just got a knack for playing football, for getting open, making big plays. Um, so like, I mean, Mayor almost does stuff physically that you look at him, it's like, yeah, is he going to run a four six forty? I don't know. All right, let's move into talking about Notre Dame's five offensive line signees. We'll start here with Joey Tanona. Um, in-state recruit from Zionsville in the Indianapolis area, picked the Irish over Ohio State, Michigan, a uh, bunch of other schools. Um, so let's uh, let's take a look at Mr. Tenona. Junior year let's. film, I should mention. I didn't. There was only like one game of senior films. So it was about four minutes of junior film. So Mike, uh, what, what, yeah, what to our saying? point earlier. So I remember right. watching Joey when he committed. I think we talked about we it did. briefly on our show, and I was like. Um, my my thought at the time was like uh, he's better than Rocco Spindler, and Rocco Spindler got a lot of publicity uh, because again the look and the name and the you know the background all those things which totally understandable but um, Tonona was a much more dominant player at the same position than Rocco was in in my estimation and like I wrote down in my notes he's a heavy player heavy hands. You know, he reminds me of Quentin Nelson in that he makes domination look easy. Like, he almost looks lazy at times. He's just throwing dudes around. And um, it's really tough, Mike, to evaluate interior guys on the offensive line, especially without seeing them in person and, like, seeing how deep they are in their chest and, like, you know, really getting a, to see a kid up close and personal. But um, super physical player. I think he's a guard at the next level. There's times on film where you see him where – He's so concerned with dominating the man on that he he won't release and kind of climb to the second level. Not a concern um, in terms of when they run those duo double team blocks, but here's, yeah, this is the play. So he should have got off to the linebacker there that's fast blowing, but um, have you ever been around him, Mike? Like seen yeah. him in the flesh? Once, once. Big kid. Big dude. He, Big dude. I got a picture of him. Uh, I I, will, I can't bring it up on the screen. I don't have it on my desktop, but I got him standing next to Blake Fisher, and it's like, whoa, <laughs> you know, he's a big dude. Like he's almost as big as Blake. So yeah, yeah, yeah. So if the you know if the feet are uh, if his feet are a half a step slow, like you know, again, I think Joe Alt's got better feet than Blake. But gosh dang, man, Blake's so damn big. Um, he's just hard to get around. So yeah, I'm a I'm a fan of Joey Tonona, and I'm a fan of his physicality, even if he makes it look. It looks so easy at times that he almost looks lazy, but a kid with some frame, that's got some shit to him. Uh, I, I'm really a fan of Joey Tonona. Yeah, so we've seen him play for sure. 
seen him play some center from his junior season. Mm-hmm. Um, he put, played a ton of left tackle, but I do think guard. Um, but yeah, he can play. I, I think he could play any of the the five spots except for probably left tackle. Um, uh, yeah, that's, that's my note. I put guard or right tackle. And to me, I, you know, again, we're this is some of this is guesswork, Mike. Like I don't know the the football IQ, the trust factor there in terms of playing center, like identifying defenses and all those things. I don't know if he's athletic enough to play center. I think he's just a just kind of live there and be just a badass guard, man. I do. I want to say this for our YouTube audience here. I, I, this is the game I was at. This was Tonona versus Fisher. I want to say that might be Fisher at nose. Let's see. Oh, interesting. No, it's not. But there, I, I have footage. It's on our YouTube page. If you search, if you find it, um, I, I have clips of, of Tonona and Blake was at nose tackle. Blake didn't really know what he was doing at nose tackle. He was just a big body there, but um, that was... Always pretty interesting. So Tanona is interesting and in like he committed to Notre Dame. He's the first guy in the class back in, you know, summer of 2020. And a guy like that commits early and is not a big social media guy. He's not going to any more camps or or anything like that. So he's just kind of the forgotten man, kind of, whether it's fan interest or rankings or or what like he doesn't really do any interviews. I haven't talked to him since that game fall of 2020 that I just talked about it just doesn't really you know care about media stuff let me tell you something but he looks I, 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 I spoke about that with Rocco um I don't want my offensive lineman in the media I don't want my offensive lineman doing media uh, doing media like you want him to do his part like to help recruit and all that but just generically speaking in the lineage of offensive linemen that's not who they are generally speaking I saw a clip of Quentin Nelson the other day Gosh, who are they playing? I don't remember. But, the, you know, the linebacker comes downhill. He picks up the linebacker, just crushes him. And the linebacker's like, you all right? And he's like, yes, sir. And then he helped him right back up. Like, just literally just dominated another grown man and helps him right back up. The, the kind of the humility piece there. I think, you know, Joey Tonona could be a really good player for a, a long time. And, you know, famously, you never want to hear the offensive lineman's name called. I'm a big fan of his. You know, some of this stuff, they got to get acclimated just to – college life and college football, but I would project, I mean, just with how physical he is and how heavy he looks in terms of the hands and the, um, just kind of the weight and the force on impact. I would project him to be a starter some point down the road for sure. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Okay. Um, next up, Billy Shrouth. Um, my, I know you're not like a big Rocco Spindler guy. I know you like him, but like, you know, Oh Yeah. Everyone loves them to death. I know you're not like you were the same with Will Shipley. You you you've been the same with other guys. Shrouth to me is is comparable to Spindler. Like his tape reminds me of Spindler, two way interior lineman from the Midwest. Um, Great call, Mike. I agree. So, all right, we'll I watch uh, watch some of Shrouth here. And just to be clear, um, that's not a knock on Rocco or any, but I was just like I was like, okay, I'll wait more of a wait and see, Mike. Right. So, Shroth, what do you think of him? I'm not ready to anoint him just yet. Um, again, I wish I could see him in person, but he looked he looked great on film. Um, he did uh, he didn't seem as as dominant to me as Tonona did in terms of just blowing people off the ball, um, kind of like a like a, almost like a wave in the ocean. That's how Tonona to me looks like people just move out of the way. Uh, technique was great. I see the appeal absolutely. Um, I think you can move him around on the, on the line as well. So offensive line, it's like, to me, it's like height, weight, technique. Can he bend a little bit? You know, you don't want to be stiff. I saw him make a uh, shroud, make a couple plays playing defense. It was kind of indicative of his like overall athleticism, right, Mike? Um, but yeah, not quite for all the fanfare, Mike, you know, you want to see, like, let me let me try and explain this, Mike. Do it. Yep. So, like, when I train kids, like, I had a couple kids today that I worked with. When sometimes when, like, oh, an offensive lineman, when they hit somebody, it's almost like you want a bomb to go off. Like, it's an explosion, right? And then sometimes on, on film with high school kids, like, they make impact and then they sort of ride them, right? They sort of, like, ride them or drive them out of the ground versus, like, 
that impact and that bomb going off. And sometimes like that, that was a good example of that, that explosive kind of driving your hips on impact. You, you wish you just saw a little bit more of with uh Shrouf, but you see the technique there and say that he's well coached. He's kind of further along than probably most just big boy high school offensive linemen at the high school level. Here's a chance to see some athleticism. So that's kind of rare to break down, drop your weight. If you see that to kind of change a direction. So it's, uh, you know, it's maybe like a, talking about the class in general, Mike, that's a nice play. I feel like Shrouth and Emil Wagner could kind of almost be cousins here in terms of like their athletes playing the position and sort of the athleticism kind of jumps out and maybe the physicality isn't like as demonstrative as maybe like a Tonona. Okay. But you can see the the overall, like you're recruiting the athlete there versus just a badass kind of thumper in the middle. Sure. Mike, I love like so, so often your takes match perfectly with the fan, what the fan likes, but I love when we get a little spicy, Mike, and you, you're, you, you know, because Shrouth is anointed, right? Tanone is a little bit forgotten. Rocco's anointed, you know, like, so I, I love your, uh, I love your little opposite takes there. Well, it's, it's just everything. It's the, that's the why, Mike. One of the reasons I love football, dude, is like, there's a yin and yang to it. Like, so Tanona might be a slightly lesser athlete, but he might be just like, like I played with a guy, Mike, Larry Allen, right? He played four different positions in offensive line in my, you know, cup of coffee that I had with the Dallas Cowboys. And like, I mean, there's a clip of Larry Allen running a linebacker down on interception on YouTube. You can see it, you can find it. But like Larry Allen was, you know, would go into the gym and he would like warm up with 315 on the bench press, famously bench 750 pounds. But like when Larry Allen, I, you'd watch him do one-on-one -on -one pass rush drills. Like, and dude, he would like get his hands on people, like come out of a lazy stance He's 11 years in the league at the time or whatever. Just like wait and just grab him. And it was over. And these are like NFL defensive linemen. And he's has them by their chest plate as if they're like a 10-year-old kid. So maybe not the athleticism at that point in, in, in his career, but just had the strength. Whereas like Tonona might have just that raw sort of country strength. And Shrouth and or Spindler might be a little bit better athlete. I think I think Shrouth's a better athlete than Rocco. But uh, yeah, that's the yin and yang of it. So it's like you're recruiting the athlete at the position, or you're recruiting a thumper, sure. and you try and find that 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 kind of happy balance or happy medium. Let's look at another um, an athlete uh, on the offensive line. I mean, Emil Wagner. Uh, wow. I mean, he's not enrolling early at Notre Dame because he's. Um, playing basketball and wants to win a state title and shot put uh, listed at 6'6", 260. So it's got a little ways to go. Uh, I remember when I went to see Wagner at his high school in the fall, I asked his coach, I was like, you know, he, he's, he's thin right now. I mean, he, he looks like he could be a tight end. Do you think there's any concern about him putting on weight? And he said, it's like, no, not at all. We condition these guys so much that, you know, we don't let them like put on much weight. So, um, I think Matt Bayless is, you know, drooling at the, at the opportunity to, to get this young man in his weight room. So what do you think about Emil Wagner, Mike? That's a shoot, dude. If I mean, if it pans out, I mean, that's a first round pick, like in terms of just athletic ability, again, like the fluidity is just the like natural movements, like nothing looks clumsy, right? His feet are always underneath him. length, um, yeah, it might take a year or two. And ba I'm glad you brought up basketball. I trained a kid a couple of years ago that wound up, wound up going to South Dakota State. And he played tight end, played eight man football, and he played tight end. And he and he was a pretty you know competitive high level. Played like travel ball, AAU, and all this basketball. He stopped playing basketball, dude. He put on like 30 pounds in a month. You know, so I folks can get concerned about weight or whatever, but. Um, if you maybe give this kid a year or two, but look what happened with Joe Alt this year, but this is like an NFL left tackle yeah. just in terms of just straight up movement, uh, ability to mirror people. He's never like lunging. 
bass uh that kid's awesome yeah appreciate everyone joining us live here on youtube if you're just uh joining us we are um breaking down notre dame's offensive signees in the 2022 class if you missed if you're like i said you're just joining us now you can always um you know start this thing over and uh watch the beginning uh, and we will do a defensive video, I think, what, tomorrow at 7 p.m. Central, 8 p.m. Eastern time, Mike? We're t- talking about the defense? Let's do it. Yeah, so we'll do that. So Emil Wagner, I mean, he's got the athleticism, and you're telling me he's got the technique, so it's like, damn. He just needs I mean, a little bit, yeah, just needs a little bit of power. Um, and, you know, in, in just terms of, like, girth to hold up. But, like, you could see... I don't want to be like that guy, right? That gets like too into the weeds on no, technique and stuff. So like what I would teach offensive linemen or even a tight end, like if they're blocking, it's like if you go out in your driveway, right? And you pull your car into the street and you have to start pushing your car, Mike, let's say you ran out of gas, hypothetically. Like sometimes when kids block, like they're on their, they're on their forefoot, they're on their toes. And like, you don't get movement until you can sort of use like the instep of your, of your feet and then you sort of like roll your hips so like when you're watching Emil play he's always on the insteps of his feet and that's kind of where the power comes from and also he gets great lateral movement with that um this kid's going to be a really good player if everything shakes out in terms of the athleticism I actually put a note in there uh what I say I said size will help him anchor but he has explosiveness to move people in terms especially laterally said one and I said one of the better athletes overall in the class yeah just in terms of athleticism and I kind of wrote this tongue in cheek but like remember early in the season before Alt became a freshman all-american at left tackle we used him as like a blocking tight end wearing number 45 or something yep. if I remember correctly I mean it wouldn't shock me if Emil Wagner um because he is such an athlete it wouldn't shock yep. me if he was in a similar type role so, Mike, I did, get him on the field. I did an article at BloomGold.com Friday, I want to say, and it was uh, superlatives, you know, um, MVP of the class, uh, boomer bus, you know, most likely to succeed type things. Who would you pick for best athlete? I mean, this is – I can give you my finalists. I went uh, with best. Wagner or Rarity. Well, Sneed. I'd Sneed. say Sneed. Okay. I went with Snead for class MVP. So Wagner or Raritan? Who's the better who's the better athlete? I'd ha- yeah, honest to God, Mike. And it's such a lame answer, but I'd have to see Wagner play hoops. Okay. I'd have to see him play hoops to because I've seen Raritan play hoops and I feel like I'm a little bit biased because of it. Um and you know, so if you're saying that if Wagner's only carrying 30, 40 more pounds than, than Eli is at this point in, in his development, um, I could see where you're coming from, but Snead's the best athlete in the class. We could do a whole hour on Jalen Snead tomorrow, Mike. Let's not and say we did. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't got that, t- that kind of time. Okay. So, let's... but you know, what's re- yep. just kind of like as we sort of continue to move on through the class, like, I almost look at it because I, I think it's fun to always compare this stuff to NFL because I, I think you're, maybe your average our average YouTube viewer has more familiarity with like the NFL draft more than they do like signing classes because you never know the rabbit hole somebody might find themselves in. It's like, well, who are this? who's this school's being singer? And they stumble into our YouTube videos. But like when you look at an NFL draft class, like if you can get a couple starters and maybe have like one all pro out of your six, seven draft picks, like that's a great draft class. So, like, when you look at our class, I think Wagner, I don't want to get into particulars, but there's enough kids on that. You know, you, yeah, I don't want to get into specific kids, but, like, there's enough, there's a handful of kids in that class where you could be like, well, that could be the equivalent of, like, an all-pro one day. Like, these are draftable type kids, which is what we want to see, um, you know, to close that that gap with the the elites. All right, next up will be in just a moment, uh, Ty Chan, a uh, big man uh, from the uh, Boston, Massachusetts area. So uh, another early commit for Notre Dame, Under Armour All-American. Penn State was trying to flip him late um, after he'd already been uh, committed to Notre Dame for quite some time. So uh, what do you think about Mr. Chan? Have you ever been around him, Mike, before I get into it? Have you ever met him? Once. 
So I just in like, I feel like, cause he's a, where's he from? Like Connecticut, well, um, Massachusetts, Massachusetts. So something just tells me about this kid. And he also has like, uh, the look, right. Like between he and Rocco, like, you know, they can be, uh, extras in any football movie for the, that comes out in the next 20 years. Like they just look the part. Something tells me that Ty Chan's got like some shit to him. And I think it might take him a year or two to get acclimated or whatever. But I, something tells me this kid's got like more mental toughness. I, there's just something about him kind of watching him play. I'm optimistic. It might take him some time, but I think he could be a really, 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 really good player. Um, and I think he plays several different spots. I don't know if he's a true left tackle. Um, but how fun, like you think about the, I think that, you know, if you look at these, these four offensive linemen, we'll get into the final one here in a second, but like the luxury of having alt at left tackle and then you, you're and, or Blake, but I would project Blake to move over to the right side, but what a luxury to have two young kids as your sort of bookends for the next two, three years, where you can let the, some of these other younger kids that like, gosh, darn, you can see the potential there. But they uh, maybe can buy themselves a little bit more time and they're not as under the gun in terms of developing. But Ty Chan, I think, could be a special player, too. I thought that when I first when he first committed way back when a kid that kind of knows what he wants. He's going to have to learn. I, I don't imagine he's getting the best coaching and the level of competition there. But there's something about that kid. I, I think he'll end up being a really good player for us. I think that he should also be a starter down into the future as well yeah so going through the signees we talked about so far you know you got wagner you talk about several times you, know, you think he's a left tackle potentially of the future for notre dame shrouth an interior guy to we talked about you know being another interior guy what about chan what do, you, what do you think about him i think he'd be a guard and again you're you're talking very generically could wagner be a, a fantastic pulling guard freaking hell yeah he could but like you're just saying projecting i always look at like the nfl projection his movement skills he's a left tackle and the body type like go the packers game i don't even know who their starting left tackle is number 73 but he's got arms down to his knees he's like six foot eight like based off that kid's body type he's a left tackle you understand so when you look at wagner it's like well that's just an obvious penciled in He's, he'll be 6'6", 310 in three, four years. And like that's a NFL type left tackle. So to answer your question, Mike, I think Chan could play either guard or tackle. Yeah, I agree. It's um because he he seems to be in just a, a really big framed, kind of wide bodied kid that's a better athlete than he should be. The only one that I does I don't think thus far in the class. I think Shroud's a guard slash center. Probably more of a center if you had to if you put a gun to my head. And Tanone is a guard. Uh, but I think Wagner could play guard tackle. I think Chan could play guard tackle. And we have one more recruit to talk about um, in Notre Dame's offensive class, and that is Ashton Craig, lowest ranked, lowest kind of heralded guy, um, but. Uh, an, uh, an all American had close to 30 offers and uh, another, another good one. So what do, you, what do you think about Ashton Craig, Mike? Every class needs an Ashton Craig. I've mentioned my buddy before Kyle Budensack was the, the lowest ranked kid in our class. And he ended up being the second player to get on the field. So not to like, and that's not to call him a, you know, a glue guy or, or whatever is the case, but um yeah, another good player. I don't. I don't know. He doesn't look to me. So I, I would say he might be another sort of center guard candidate. He on 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 film. That's why it sucks that I can't see these kids in person. Why don't I go to the All American game with you down in San Antonio, dude? So I could see some of these kids. But like, I'm just planting that seed. Um, he doesn't look to have the 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 overall frame and length that some of the other kids in the class do. So I feel like he might work better um, inside. It just might be a more natural fit for him. But try hard kid, good feet, light, real light on his feet, if I'm honest with you. Um, not as dominant 
as like a Tanona or a, a Wagner, but just a really, really good football player. I played with a guy like this. Uh, back in the day, Irish fans might, might, might remember him, Dan Santucci. Dan Santucci was kind of wasn't a you know five star type kid. Came into Notre Dame as a three technique defensive lineman, and ended up moving offensive line like his last year and played in the NFL for like four years as a guard. Hmm. Uh, just tough. Would do his job like you have to have room for that. You can't have physical freaks you know across the board, right? That's kind of unrealistic. Um. But yeah, I would say he's a guard center, real light on his feet and a better athlete, but just doesn't look to have like, I don't, he's not going to be able to carry, you know, 310, 320 pounds. It doesn't look like to me. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, um, I guess the last thing I want to ask you, Mike, is what you kind of think about comparing Notre Dame's 2021 offensive line class with this 2022 group. Now, I don't remember when Caleb Johnson and Pat Coogan committed in the 2021 class, if we did much, you know, ha- had you break those guys down. But I know you've, you know, been able to watch, you know, obviously Alt, Spindler, and Fisher. So comparing that class oh, yeah. on top of it with this class, I mean. That's fun to think. Well, you got to you gotta help me w- walk through this. But off the top of my head, Ashton Craig is your Pat Coogan. Yep. Would you agree? Yep. Okay, so who's another one from 2021? Caleb Johnson. They flipped from Auburn. I, I'm not familiar enough to give you a fair answer, so skip yeah. it. Well, what's interesting is you can pretty much you got. I mean, you, you signed five in both classes, so you have basically a full offensive line in in, in, in both classes. I actually, um, I put this together. So let me pull this up real quick. This was my 2021 offensive line. So that class last year, Joe Alt left tackle. A lot of people are like, whoa, Mike, you're saying Fisher over all for, or, you know, all over Fisher left tackle. Like it's, it's just, I am throwing, but we, we both are. Okay. All right. Again, why, why do we, well, people are so funny. Sorry, Mike, Joe all to me again, was our mid season. If like, I mean, he's third or fourth in terms of like team MVP, MVP voting to me, he becomes a freshman, all American and people are like, well, Blake's still better. It's like, what? You know what I mean? Like, why did you anoint Blake Fisher? And if Blake Fisher moves to the right side, sure. what's the difference? Anyways. I had Joe Walt left tackle, Spindler left guard, Coogan center, Caleb Johnson right guard, Blake Fisher right tackle. Now for the 2022 class, Wagner left tackle, Shrouth left guard, Chan, or excuse me, Craig center, uh, Tonona right guard, Chan right tackle. I mean, I think that the 2021 class is more top heavy, but damn, that 2022 class is uh, is deeper. Um, that that's kind of my thought. I like it. I mean, really good job, actually. I mean, you nailed it with the the Alt Fisher in the previous class, and they're not all probably they're not all gonna stick around. I mean, they probably lose a couple here or there. It's just the nature of the, of right. the beast. Um. But I do think it's a nice mix to be like, okay, well, who's maybe – maybe the question is like who's going to play first, right? So maybe we don't think – maybe we don't think Wagner, generically speaking, like maybe Shroud because Shroud looks like he has better technique than you see for most kids. Like he might be able to play a little bit. I think Tenona needs a little bit of work in his conditioning. <laughs> um, but that's something else. Both great classes. And when you combine them, Mike. Yeah. And this is tough. Because I don't have Wagner on there, but you kind of you talked about earlier. You, you you could see Wagner at a at a guard, and I'm kind of like, oh man, kind of like that idea. But I had Alt left tackle, Spindler left guard, Tonona center, right guard, Shrouth right tackle, Blake Fisher. When you combine Notre Dame's 21 and 22 classes on the offensive line, I'm like, that is such a damn good class right there, uh, or a good uh, lineup right there. Well. This is, again, we love the hypotheticals, but I could see, let's just pencil an alt at left, Blake at right, Fisher at right tackle, maybe move Spindler to center. Okay. I think there's an interesting kind of leadership vocal piece there where I don't think he's asked to be as, you know, he can he can climb to the next level. But Emil Wagner at guard is, is interesting because I played the linebacker position 
And like when you've got a, a guard that's up in your shit like that, it makes for a long day. And as athletic as he is, I could really see, I mean, for him to, to climb like that, there's nobody else in either class. It's comparable in terms of like the ability. I mean, you saw him running down the field. So uh, we'll see how it shakes out. I mean, again, I'm not privy to getting to watch practice film or one-on-ones or anything like that, but um, it looks like we're in good shape uh, on the offensive line for a few years to come here, bud. Yeah. The tight end too. It's just like, man, like Notre Dame's, uh, you know, they got to And get I don't tell so, yeah, as seen. we kind of wind this down, Mike, don't get, don't get, uh, too upset about only signing the one receiver. I think you got a really, really good player in Merriweather. And I think I, I'll say it like, I mean, his play style, body movement, speed, explosiveness, jumping ability, hands, etc. a little bit of the cockiness, a little bit of the, the swagger. Like that's, you're getting into sort of like that SEC Bama type player. And we need more of those types of players, but he sort of fits that mold to me more so than I think any receiver that's on the roster. Sure. Okay. All right. We've hit the hour mark. We are uh, through all the guys in the, in the offensive class. So um, we will Notre Dame sign 21 players. We'll skip breaking down the punter unless you have some punter insights, Mike, that you, um, you know, really probably not. So we'll, we'll, we'll no, talk about no. the, the 10, <laughs> the 10 defensive signees uh, in a, in a video Monday night that we will also post on our podcast channel. So make sure to check that out. Appreciate you guys watching live with us. Make sure you hit that thumbs up for get out of here. Go to blue and for your home uh, coverage of Notre Dame fighting Irish uh, football and all athletics and sign up for our free newsletter, which you can find in the description box of this video or on our front page over at blueandgold.com. Appreciate you guys, and we'll catch you next time.